Hello and welcome. Thanks for tuning in to my channel. My name is Oscar Perez. I am the creator of Primal Kinetics. This series is dedicated to the history of physical performance and fitness. In my prior video, part one, I ended it with the dark and middle ages. Let's continue the timeline. The Renaissance from 1400 to 1600. A rebirth of cultural learning occurred during this period and a renewed interest in the human body emerged. Several public figures like John Locke, Vittorino da Feltra and Richard Mulcaster maintained that high fitness levels enhanced intellectual learning. Civilizations that recognized the importance of fitness needed an avenue to convey this knowledge to their people. Therefore, physical education and fitness shared a common bond. Physical education became the tool to spread the value and benefits of fitness throughout society. The renewed appreciation for human life, which evolved during this period, created an environment which was ready for the widespread development of physical education in Europe. In 1553, El Libro del Ejercicio Corporal y sus Provechos by Cristóbal Méndez was the first book to exclusively address physical exercise and its benefits. In the book, exercises, games, and sports are classified, analyzed, and described from a medical standpoint, and advice is offered on how to prevent and recover from injuries resulting from these physical pursuits. In the book, there are several chapters that even provide specific advice on particular drills and games for women, children, and the elderly. Sixteen years later, Mercurialis, an Italian physician, published the Arte Gymnastica. It was the combination of his studies of classical and medical literature, particularly the ancient Greeks and Romans' approach to hygiene, diet, and exercise, and their use of natural methods for the treatment of disease. Laying out the principles of physical therapy for the first time, and accompanied with beautiful illustrations, it is considered the first book on sports medicine and strongly influenced the wave of physical education and training methods that started to emerge in Europe two centuries later. Nationalism in Europe from 1700 to 1900. Continental Europe underwent numerous cultural changes following the Renaissance. Fitness remained important and continued to follow trends initiated during the previous period. Physical activity programs expanded with the emerging nations. Intense feelings from nationalism and independence created the atmosphere for the first fitness movement, which came in the form of gymnastic programs. These programs had an immense influence and popularity during this era, and were particularly prevalent in Germany, Denmark, Sweden, and Great Britain. In the year 1774, Johann Bernard Beisto, influenced by Rousseau's idea of the natural human, opened the Philanthropium in Germany, with an emphasis on physical exercise and games including wrestling, running, riding, fencing, vaulting, and dancing. The school's uniforms, which were often heavy and constricting during this time period, were made more comfortable to allow students greater freedom of movement. This model inspired the founding of similar institutions and physical training began to become more systemized and included as an integral part of the educational curriculum. Twenty years later, Lutz Mutz, another German teacher and educator, developed the basic principles of artistic gymnastics for which he is regarded as the great grandfather of gymnastics. He wrote the first systematic textbook in gymnastics called Gymnastics for the Youth, which was published in 1800 and became a standard reference for physical education in the English-speaking world. The father of gymnastics, Friedrich Ludwig John, came into the scene in 1810. He was an essential pioneer of physical education, an ardent German nationalist who lived through Napoleon's invasion of Germany, felt that the best way to prevent another such incursion was to help his people develop their bodies and minds. To this end, he led young men on fresh air expeditions 
and taught them gymnastics and calisthenics to restore their physical and moral strength. Jan contributed with the invention of the pommel horse, horizontal bar, and the parallel bars. He also promoted the use of gymnastic rings. The physical culture festivals that he sponsored attracted as many as 30,000 enthusiasts. At the essence and end goal of his gymnastic and calisthenics methods were above all practical and functional, not artistic. He advocated for the practice of traditional natural movements like running, balancing, jumping, climbing, and so on. In Sweden, Per Henrik Ling developed principles of physical development, emphasizing the integration of perfect bodily enhancement with muscular beauty. By contrast, the Swedish system promoted light gymnastics, employing little, if any, apparatuses like his invention, the wall bars, and focusing more on calisthenics, breathing, and flexibility, as well as massage. The Swedish approach had four categories, pedagogic, military, medical, and aesthetic. All movements had to be performed correctly and in freestanding fashion under a leader's direction, which differed from the predominant, more mobile, strenuous, and practical German method. Aspect of this method can still be traced in some modern programs of physical training. Around the same time, Francisco Amoros from Spain founded a military gymnastic school in Madrid then moved to Paris to establish the normal gymnastic civil and military school in 1819. In 1830, he published a guide to physical gymnastic and moral education. He later opened a popular civilian gymnastics hall in Paris after being removed from his post as leader of the army's physical training program and became the pioneer of physical education in France and Spain. The French physical culture pioneer and strongman Hippolyte Triade founded in 1847 a massive gymnasium in Paris, where the bourgeois, aristocrats, and spirit youth joined in an enthusiastic pursuit of fitness. In the 1870s, after the loss of Alsace-Lorraine to the Germans, the already budding nationalistic mood in France exploded. Physical education became a principal focus in French schools as battalions of young men were trained to avenge the country. The Highland Games began in Scotland during the romantic trend of the 1830s which included traditional physical activities that are distinctive to Scottish culture, such as caber tossing, hammer throwing, and the stone shot put, along with running, wrestling, and jumping. In England, Charles Darwin's concept of survival of the fittest gave that nation's nascent physical culture movement a boost. Englishmen wanted to be strong enough to rise to the top of nature's hierarchy. In 1849, the first English athletic competition was conducted at the Royal Military Academy. Scott Archibald McLaren opened a well-equipped gymnasium at the University of Oxford in 1858, where he trained 12 army officers who then implemented his teachings into the British Army. The Czech Sokol movement is worth mentioning, which was founded in 1862. This youth sports and gymnastics organization was inspired by the German Turverine and provided physical, moral, and intellectual training for the nation through fitness programs, lectures, group outings, and massive gymnastic festivals. This training extended to men of all economic classes and eventually to women, and from there to the entire Slavic world. This is it for this video. In part three, I'm going to be talking about the Americas during the same time period, 1700 to 1900. With that said, my name is Oscar Perez, and until next time, thanks for watching.